Hello everybody, in this video we're going to be looking at aquifers for your A-level in environmental science. Now, to go with this, as it is with every single video that we've done, on the website there is a free set of questions and a free set of flashcards that you can use to make sure you've remembered everything. Lesson 10, aquifers. An aquifer is a rock that is able to hold water. They are a form of water storage that humans use to extract water from. Not all rock types can form an aquifer. They have to have certain features in order to be able to do so. Firstly, a rock must be porous. This means that a large volume of the rock will contain air spaces which are able to hold water. Secondly, the rock must be permeable, which means water can flow through the rock with ease due to the interconnections between the air spaces. An example of a rock that cannot form aquifers is clay, as it is impermeable and has low porosity. Whereas rocks such as chalk, limestone and sandstone can become aquifers. For an aquifer to be able to retain the water it is holding without escaping, the rocks below it must be permeable so the water cannot flow through it. Furthermore, the rocks above the aquifer need to be permeable to allow for rainwater to percolate down from the earth's surface and recharge or refill the aquifer. For your exam, it is vital that you are confident with the difference between porosity and permeability. It is a common mistake to think that they mean the same thing, but the examiner wants you to be able to define the difference in your exam. Aquifer recharge is a natural process that happens when rainfall percolates down through the rocks above into the aquifer. Naturally, the volume of recharge and the volume that leaves the aquifer are in a state of dynamic equilibrium. Humans abstract water from aquifers by drilling down to release the water using pressure. A confined aquifer will have a high pressure naturally that forces the water upwards, but an unconfined aquifer may require pumping of gases into it to increase the pressure and force the water out. If abstraction rate exceeds natural recharge rate, then the aquifer becomes depleted. In this case, humans may intervene and perform artificial recharge where water is pumped down into the aquifer. Depleting aquifers by overexploitation can have lots of negative impacts. First of all, it can cause the water table to be lowered. The water table can be defined as the depth in the ground where everything below is saturated with water. Lakes and rivers are often replenished by groundwater, so a lowering of the water table may lower the level of water in the rivers and lakes too. This can also lead to aquatic or semi-aquatic habitats drying out completely, meaning the organisms that live there will also die as they cannot survive in the arid conditions. Furthermore, there will be less water available in the soil for plant roots to absorb, leading to crop dehydration and death in agriculture. This could also cause trophic cascades in the local food webs, as herbivores rely on plants as food species, so may also die out when the plants die. This leads to a reduction in biodiversity of an area, making it more vulnerable to changes. Another risk when overexploiting aquifers is saltwater incursion. This is where salt water from the oceans flows into a freshwater aquifer, making it unsuitable for many uses, such as irrigation. If a farmer were to water crops of salt water, it would cause them to die by osmotic dehydration. This happens because the salt in the water causes water already in the plant tissues to leave by osmosis. Fresh water in the aquifer would usually prevent salt water incursion as it blocks the movement of seawater inland. If an aquifer becomes depleted, then the air spaces are no longer filled with water, so there is less support for the structure of the rock. This can lead to the rock becoming more easily compacted by materials above it, leading to subsidence at the surface. This can cause damage to natural habitats, but also building foundations and infrastructure pipelines and cables. In order to prevent these impacts from happening, all aquifers are closely monitored to ensure water level remains high enough. The first method to do so is by drilling boreholes into the aquifer to measure the depth at which the water table lies. Furthermore, GRACE satellites can be used which monitor changes in the Earth's gravitational field. The more mass an object has, the higher its force of gravity. Therefore, 
If an aquifer becomes depleted, then its mass will decrease, decreasing its force of gravity, which could be picked up by the satellite. In the exam, you may be asked for advantages and disadvantages of different monitoring techniques, so make sure you're happy with them. Here are some examples of the monitoring techniques with advantages and disadvantages to add to your notes. Ouch! This is why in some videos I don't explain scratches. <laughs>